Okay, I'm back now. Um, that was not my little brother getting home from school. My dad needed me to peel garlic for him. We're having pizza tonight. And he loves to put garlic on pizza. So Bill's just going to spin here. Yeah. So I'll just time accelerate through the re-entry. But um, as I was saying, channel plans. So uh, Jackson Ricken wanted me to do a Saturn V Apollo 11 special. I was wondering what you guys would think about that. I would give you a craft download of my um, Saturn V. I'd love to hear in the comments what you guys would think about that. Also, I am said in the comments I would discuss my opinions of the game Minecraft. I see Minecraft differently from most people, but I definitely enjoy it. So, when I was younger, I liked to draw a lot. I don't draw very much anymore because Minecraft gives me more control than a pencil or pen. Uh, I like to consider Minecraft as my canvas and I will use it to paint my pictures. So I was wondering if you guys would like a Minecraft Let's Build series. So that's when I'll film myself building things and create a time lapse of the building process. And then play it really quickly but have some like normal clips as well. I'd also love to hear your opinion about that. I think that would be very enjoyable, but it would be very time consuming, so I could only make about one to two a week. Okay, so those are my series ideas for now. I'll have more probably in the next few episodes. So about the mic, I ordered one on Amazon that is USB, so that should solve the problem, because my previous two have been like headphone jack mics, and that's apparently not good. But, uh, that was probably the issue. But yeah, that'll be here in two to five days, so I might have it next episode, I might not. I'd love to have it next episode, but I might have to make one more with this ghetto setup, which is too bad, because I know how horrible it is, and I'm very sorry. I hate making a promise that I can't keep. But unforeseeable issues arose, so I did the best I could, and I failed. But yeah, so we got the contract, finally. Now we can move on to the next one. Okay, they want tourists. I'm not going to do that. They want me to test an engine, but I said I wouldn't do that because that is boring. Okay. So there's nothing really here we can do right now. Nothing to... There is Orbit, Kerbin. Uh, that does give me a pretty decent reward. I could build a ship to go to Orbit. And that's another thing I was wondering. I'd like something in the comments about this as well. I would really like uh, to know if you would like me to film the process of me building the ships. Right now, it's not that bad. But later on, it will get very time-consuming and could take up entire episodes. I was wondering if you'd want to see that or not. Some YouTubers completely cut that out. Some do it completely. Some do time lapses like they do, like I mentioned with my Minecraft, of it. It's your choice. So anyways, I forgot to think of names, so we'll go with B1 because this is now the next one and it's the first in its version. I really would love it if you could give me some suggestions of names for rockets in the comments. Because I am so bad at making and remembering names. Anyways, so we'll give it the complimentary package of stuff. I will give it the materials bay, and I don't have batteries, so I won't bother with this material, this cargo bay. It's really nice, but yeah. Okay, now I'll put on the parachutes and set them like I did last time. Got to remember to hit F because it gives you this. When it's F, it goes to um, relative to the part, which is good. Anyways, now I'm going to science, and I'll put mystery goo containment units. Yep. And then the heat shield. That's an aerodynamic. Okay. So then I'll put a decoupler on it, and that'll be the capsule. So I'll pull this up, like that. And then we need our in-orbit stage. So I'm going to use these bigger fuel tanks. These are from KW Rocketry. They're pretty nice. So my second stage, I think, should be about that big. And we will give it the Vesta VR1. 
Also, KW Rapidry. Another reason I use this mod, KW Rapidry, is look how nice that engine is. You can s clearly see the individual components, the combustion chamber, the uh, fuel pump burners. These stock engines, they're nice, but these are amazing. These are just okay. Yeah. And then there's the Wildcat. That's a pretty nice one, too. And you can see it's got this two fuel pumps and the big combustion chamber. And I'll probably use that on the first stage. This is the upper stage. So the Vista is not very powerful, but it's very efficient in space. So that's why you would put it on an upper stage. The Wildcat, the one I'll be using next, is not as efficient. I have this other mod called Procedural Fuel Tanks. I can't remember if I showed that to you. Here it is. I can change the shape and size of the fuel tank, and I can also change its texture. They're quite nice, but unfortunately they're expensive, so I won't be using them till later when I have more money. Okay, this store will put the Wildcat. Okay, so it already weighs 16 tons. The launch pad I think had a limit of 17, but it might have been 30 tons. But still, now we can go a lot higher. I also have procedural solid rocket boosters. They're really good, but they're, again, super expensive for right now. I'm going to put four solid rocket boosters, and we have side-mounted decouplers, finally. So we can use those. So there are these tiny ones, but I think we'll go with the thumper, because that one's pretty good. And, oops, I always hate that when they get sideways like that. Now they're on straight. This is where the offset tool comes in very nice. I like to put the salt rock boosters down like that. Still don't have struts. Those are nice. They keep me from dying. Procedural nose cone, I'll just go with the normal kind. So yeah, that'll keep that safe. So I'll put a thrust limiter. I'll give it these bigger fins to help it steer. Yeah, and that engine can gimbal, which means it can wiggle around to help stay straight. Oh, we don't have launch clamps. I thought we had those. So I'm going to lower these even further. That way they sit on those and not the main engine on the launch pad because it'll fall over if it's balancing on just that one engine. It'll also probably break the engine. And that would be unfortunate because then we'd lose a lot of money. So first we'll have these four engines, five engines go. Then we'll decouple these, then that, then that, then that. So yeah, a mixture of solid rocket boosters and liquid fuel is nice because I can throttle the main engine, um, but I can also give it more fuel because the solid rocket booster will really push it at first. And then when I decouple it, I will have burnt fuel from the main engine, and I'll, it'll be lighter, so I'll be able to send it further. But it, these things really give you a good push. So I'm going to start at, let's say, two-thirds thrust. And Jebediah's in here. That's fine. This should be a bit of And that is loud. Wow. You can see the smoke shooting out of the sides. I love that effect. They just added that recently. They really needed it, but it took them a while to get it. So as I said, multiply that number by 2.2. .2. We're already going over 100 miles per hour. Should probably throttle back on that main engine. It's probably pretty hard for you to hear me, but I think that's alright. I can't hear my own echo though, so that's nice. Okay, so next... Okay, I discussed that. I'm looking at my lyrics. I discussed my failed experiments. I think you enjoyed that. Yeah, I'm really bad at making things explode. I do that a lot more than I should. And there's the shortcomings of this game. As I said, it doesn't have the uh, hybrid rocket engines. That would be really nice. Because those give a certain level of control to these crazy solid rocket bases, which are way too much power, in my opinion. They're cheap, and they're just super powerful. You always have to limit their thrust really crazily. You can see that they're going to run out of fuel soon. The spacecraft is rolled slightly, which is weird. I'm going to put it back on course now. But um, anyways, another problem with this game is, in real life orbital mechanics, even if you're not orbiting a body, like for example, when I'm orbiting this planet, in real life, the moon, even though I'm not orbiting it, would still affect my orbit. 
but that does not happen in the space program. It's one body orbital mechanics. So the gravity from the body you're orbiting is the only one that affects it. So that's, for example, why satellites need to have their own engines in real life to um, keep themselves in their orbits, because the, the moon will pull them out of their orbits. Oh. Okay, that was just a problem. That game's had that issue for a while. When you go to map view, you'll hear a random explosion. You can see the engine exhaust. It looks great. I love this mod. Real plume. It's great. Now, when I build that Saturn V and give you a crap download for that Saturn V special, special if you want it, you will not need the real plume mod to fly it. However, you will need probably the procedural fuel tanks mod. Oh, I should mention, that would be a totally separate, like, world, because I'm not going to do it on this safe. I don't have the money. When I go to the moon, I will be using a smaller rocket. Anyways, so we're really starting to get up there. I do think we can go to orbit with this rocket, which will be good. Another thing about Kerbal is, in real life, when fuel sits in fuel tanks, you need a boost, like, from small salt rock features on the side to push the fuel down the tanks so that it flows into the engine. Um, Kerbal does not do that. Oh, I just did something I hate doing. My fingers were not lined up with the keys, so I tried to go one way and hit the wrong key. You know, I do that a lot, too. I have a lot of bad habits. I'm going to now throttle down because we don't want to waste too much fuel. And I can hear my echo again. Wonderful. My step and I looks pretty proud of himself. He's pretty happy. So yeah. You can hear the music. We're in space now. I'm surprised at how far this got us. Those solid rocket boosters lasted a lot longer than I expected. You can see the engine glowing due to the heat. You can turn so you can watch it. Oh, and we're out of fuel. So we'll just do that. And then, of course, a real-life rocket would use, like, RCS, which I'll show you later, um, to accelerate. And that reminds me, I forgot to remove it from the cockpit. It's too bad. And there goes that engine. So, yeah. Now, that'll push us into orbit, hopefully. So, we turn on our side even more, because the idea of an orbit is you're falling at the same rate that the planet is curving away from you. So it's like a plane flying through the air, only it's going so fast that the pl that even if it were to be like in space, it could turn off its engines, and the curvature of the planet would cause it to disappear underneath it at the same rate it's going, if that makes sense. So that's how an orbit works in real life. It's the same for here. So I'm going to throttle up even further, and now we're going. So orbit is just sustained freefall, pretty much. So yeah. I love the KW rocket tree engines in this real plume mod. They're different, but you get these cool like circle things. That's quite realistic as well. Yeah, Jebediah is having fun. He's great. So yeah, I think this is our first orbital capable ship. Yeah. Yeah, SpaceX is doing a thing where they can take their first stage, which I had to decouple and land them on a barge after they decouple them and reuse them. That's just amazing. Oh, that, when the camera changes like that, it means we're in orbit. We're still going to be in the atmosphere, but I've got to turn off the engine. Because if I left it running, our highest point would get away from us. And that'd be bad. Because then we'd waste fuel and come in really quickly. So when I get up to this point, I'll boost the lowest point up even further. So, the way rocket engine efficiency works is the faster you're going, the more efficient your engine is. So, the best time to do a burn to like leave the solar system or the planet's orbit and go into an orbit around the sun would be to do it at your lowest point, because you're moving fastest at your lowest point. So that's where your engines are most efficient, or your acceleration is most efficient. Okay, and we are now in a stable orbit. Okay, now we'll do some science. So we're going to do the materials bay. Oh. Okay. Glad we saved that fuel. We're going to boost our highest point 
up to about 300. That's where we get high space. And the problem is, is that we're so l low that this counts the same science area as when we did that suborbital flight where we didn't go to orbit. And that was bad. And we'd lose a lot of science if I didn't do what I'm doing now. Okay, and I'll boost that up to 300 in there. Okay, now when we time accelerate up there, we'll be good. Hopefully. I don't have solar panels, so when I lose electricity, it doesn't come back. That's what turning does. I said that those wheels and gyroscopes are turned by electric motors. That's, of course, drains electricity. So that's why there's missing electricity. I can actually regain electricity by burning my engine because it has a alternator in it, which the... Whoa, sorry, I hit my microphone thing. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, same message as before, except the Kerbal says it looks like it would be fun to paint this rocket with this because it's glowing due to the high radiation. That's interesting. When I see glowing stuff, that's totally what I think. Let's paint the rocket with it. No. Kerbals are just weird. And the goo feels right at home. I don't know how you would determine that from a container full of a goo that you don't even know what it is. Yeah. Kerbals. They're special. It's very round. Well, yeah. That's to be expected, because it's a planet. I don't know why the engine keeps glowing. Like a little bit ago, when I played on my own, it wouldn't do that. But now it glows when I place it to the rocket, which is weird. Also, the KW rocketry engines, they have a very thick bell. This point here downward is called the bell, and it directs the exhaust of the gases to do things. But it's very thick, as you can see. The stock engines, it's very thin here. This is very thick. That's extra weight. And as we know, extra weight is bad, because then you have to burn more fuel to get higher. At least it's efficient, though. So yeah, we got into orbit. We got money and science. That's great. We did the mystery goo. We did the crew report. Nope, can't go any day. Still haven't upgraded that building. Okay. So we're. I'm going to time warp forward just a little bit, and then right about here. No, I'll go a little bit further. There. I will lower my lowest point to pretty deep within the atmosphere, but not all the way to the ground. Because if I did that, we'd come in way too quickly and possibly have issues. So I'm going to bring this down. 70 kilometers is the atmosphere, so we're already in there. And 29, that, that should be good. I've played this with an airplane, if that makes sense. Uh, in my last career mode that I did most recently before I had this YouTube channel and save. I made all my rockets have wings and be like a plane and this decoupler would not be there. I would also not have a heat shield. I'd return all of this and that would result in me saving a lot of money. I can't do that quite yet. I don't have the right fins but I'd like a vote if possible. I'm asking for a lot of votes. Um, if you'd like me to continue that, or you want me to go with the capsule style, where you return just the top part. They have their advantages. The capsule part is definitely safer. The airplane, if you mess up, you are dead. The Kerbal's dead, actually. And then that costs me money. And they are expensive. I'm such a horrible person. Anyways, I'm going to turn the rocket, and then decouple this stage. I'm going to turn off the sickness avoidance system for now, and I'll use it to boost myself upwards just a little bit. The explosion force to detach the rocket. Then we'll do that. Okay. Then I'll turn back down. So that probably boosted me up a little bit. And I will time accelerate because this is boring. Okay, I'm checking my timer. I want to see how long this is. Okay, we're already at 30 minutes. So, oh, nope, never mind. I didn't pause my timer when I went to peel that garlic for pizza tonight. So, I think we can go a few more minutes. Maybe we can squeeze one more contract into this episode. Depends on what it is. I could do another test. But, well, those are the fastest. So, yeah. I'm going to turn. There. 
So yeah, we're really losing some ablator now because we are coming in very quickly. And you can see those temperature gauges. The mystery good containers are kind of to the side, and as the plasma comes, it'll hit them. So they will heat up a lot more than the rest of the rock. They should be fine, though. They're pretty powerful. They can withstand a lot of heat. Oh! I sh Oh, crap. Okay, that's another weird bug. When you come out of orbit, the camera view changes again, and I was looking at it from underneath. And that caused the weird spinning. Well, there's the launch site. I was hoping I'd land there. I was wrong. Okay. The closer you get to the launch site, the more money you get back when you recover the vessel. And, uh, yeah. I'm gonna turn off. Nope. Definitely need the sickness avoidance system. We almost flipped over there. No, it's back to time accelerating. Oh, wiggles around. Yes, I mentioned that mod that makes stuff shake around when you're in this view and causes creaking sounds. It's really cool. I went to look it up right after I made my last video, and it's they don't have a version for this version of the game. It's super outdated. Like, it's a year old at least, so it probably would not work at all. Which is very sad. It was an awesome mod. It's probably because they added this shaking here. That's new. That came out at 1.0. Yeah. So that was a big disappointment. Because I think you guys would love that mod. It just adds a real feel to the game when things sound like they could break and snap at any second. It's really fun. I suggest looking up some videos of that because it is just entertaining. Unless that doesn't interest you. Yeah. I'm trying to think of other stuff. I went through my entire list. I, I should have made it longer. I'm, again, not preparing for things. But, oh yeah, I finally remembered. So, in about a week from tomorrow, next Wednesday, I will be going to Canada, Alberta area, I'm pretty sure. So, I won't have a video up for about a week, a little less. I'll be, go I'll be going about five or six days. So, you you'll have to survive without a video. You probably can. I'm sure you guys have other subscriptions. Hopefully, I'm not your whole life. That would be sad. Because I'm not a very big YouTuber. Not yet. Be nice and all. But a wise YouTuber once said, Don't do it to be popular. You will be disappointed. Okay. Yep, need sickness warning system still. Okay. That's that. Unsafe. So don't want to deploy the parachutes yet. Okay. I'm falling. Jebediah is loving this. He's in free fall. Okay. Now we can turn off the sickness flight system, because we have drag. Now that's interesting. This mystery good container, it no longer has its temperature gauge, which means it's pretty cool. This one, however, is very hot. So hot that it's glowing. That's not good. Metal glows when it gets hot, and if it glows too much more, it will then turn to a liquid. And that would be really bad, because then we'd lose science. And that would be sad. I'm going to review this. Hang on. Uh, 15 science. I want to show you that really funny message when it's in the water. It says the goo is escaping into the water. It's with an exclamation mark. It's pretty funny. Uh-oh. Oh, never mind. I thought I clicked review data. But it reset it. Okay, never mind. You do get to see that message. Yeah. I set these parachutes more so you can see the flag a little bit better there. Got time to accelerate. Yeah, I don't know if we'll have time actually for another contract. Well, if you don't mind a long episode, great. I might just try to squeeze one in. So he's coming down. Yeah, we're going pretty slow now. This takes a while, which is unfortunate. If any of you watch Scott Manley, he's amazing at this game. I'm not that great. He can do crazy things. If you watch him, you will just feel like a failure. I do. He's still fun to watch. But yeah. Anyways, Jeb's going to have a bit of a bump here. Yeah. Oh, it sounded like something fell off. It didn't, though. So now we'll observe Mr. Goo, and there's the message. I just find that funny. Anyways, I'm kind of tired. 
That's why I kind of lost my emotion throughout this. But, yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. We got a lot of science. Lots and lots of science. He got some reputation. Good. So I'm going to see if we made money on that. So looking at this rocket. Oh, yeah, we made money. Because we got $60,000 for completing the contract. And this rocket just cost 20000 So, yeah. We made quite a bit of money there. About $40,000, which is enough. So what's this? We after uh, Yeah, so upgrading this is worth it. So now we can get out of the rocket. I also want to upgrade that and ooh, I want to upgrade that, but probably not a good idea. Yeah. We'll have to do a contract, then we'll be safe. Anyway, science. This gives us batteries, probes, and communicators. Yeah. So communicators are good because then we can communicate with these unmanned things. So yeah, we'll get that one. And of course we can't afford those. That's where we get solar panels. Ooh, this cockpit is very good. This allows us to do the tourists, and these are the wings I need to start making those planes I mentioned. Please tell me what you think about this. Alright, back to 30 science. Can't do anything. Alright, then we'll check our contracts. Fly by the moon. We will accept that. We have a maximum of seven contracts now, so we can take a lot. Visual surveys, that's boring. So we can test the terrier, test that orbiting the moon. That's, that pays a lot. I don't know. I, I could probably do it. It'll just be a little bit of extra weight on the rocket that I sent to the moon, but that'll be okay. Yeah, I've got a year to do it. You can see that here in duration, so yeah, I'll accept that. I'll do it later, though. Okay, we'll do one test. And then, uh, I have a terrible memory. Like, I can't remember what I was supposed to test. So I've got to go back. I'm sorry. I'm so bad at remembering things. Test this to cup. Oh. Nope. I didn't actually get a one for the launch site. I meant that one. Yep, that's one we could do quickly. The Terrier engine. They had names to all these engines. They didn't used to have names. So we'll load up the test. This will be our last test for the day. Here's the Terrier. That's the Terrier. It's not very powerful. Maybe we'll uh, give it a tiny fuel tank. Give it just a little bit of fuel. Go up and then come back down. Okay. We'll move those because that's extra weight. I'm just crazy about weight. Don't want any of that. Okay. So we'll just test this and then it will be done. Yep. Okay. Uh, Jebediah gets to test it. Um, here's the engine running. Oh yeah, it, it's running. I should probably... Okay. So the engine was running. Now it's not. Because we ran out of fuel. And we got the contract. Great. Now I think we can afford to upgrade the tracking station. I could have afforded it before, but it would really stink if I didn't quite have enough money to launch my next rocket. Yeah. There, I'll have enough to launch another rocket. I've got 100,000 in it. Now we can do maneuver nodes, and I will tell you about that in a future episode. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate that. And please also post any questions, concerns, anything in the comments. Anything and everything. I love the feedback. It will help improve this channel and make your time here more enjoyable. So have a nice day. See you next episode.